to offer her insights on the midterms is Eleanor Clift, a political analyst with the news website The Daily Beast. Eleanor, welcome to our program. Glad to be here. Was this the blue wave the Democrats were hoping for? More like a blue wavelet. <laughs> it did carry the House for the Democrats, and that is no easy task. The House leadership between parties has shifted only four times since 1954. So uh, it is a huge victory that the Democrats got back this piece of power in Washington, which brings subpoena power, they can conduct oversight, and they can begin to pass legislation. It may not get through the Senate, the President may not sign it, but they can build a road map for Democratic candidates in 2020. And do, but does this mean, Eleanor, that the country is more divided than ever before? Uh, I think there was a lot of enthusiasm on the Democratic side, but we saw the president go out there with two rallies a day and really brought out the, the Republican vote as well. So yes, the divisions are extreme and passionate, and I don't see how they get overcome any time in the near future. And in a lot of places that President Trump campaigned, those candidates, those Republican candidates did very well, they won. So should the president, in fact, take some of the credit for the victories? He has some bragging rights with the Senate and with a couple of governorships. But um, his divisive rhetoric did cost him in suburban districts and did tilt the House. Uh, but he managed to keep important governorships, Ohio, Florida, in the Republican uh, can column. And, and that's important for 2020. And we... <laughs> day after the 2018 election, everybody is looking towards 2020. The permanent campaign, and I'm afraid uh, this president has discovered that his campaigning works, and I think we're going to see more of him on the campaign trail for the next two years than we see of him actually governing. Uh, let me get to the women that Jim also mentioned in his piece. A record number headed to Congress. So many first, 29-year-old woman from New York, poised to become the youngest member of Congress. Then you have two Muslim women, one from Michigan, one from Minnesota, the first Native American woman in Congress as well. Is this a turning point? And how much has the Me Too movement, or really Trump's uh, sometimes not nice rhetoric about women, especially on the campaign trail, well, galvanized this. Right. Well, more than identity of who these women are, they are women of accomplishment. There are a number of female veterans, I mean, former fighter pilots and that sort of thing. So, um, yes, I mean, I think the Democratic Party is now uh, dominantly women and minorities, but that is really the new diverse America, and I think that's what we saw elected dominantly on the Democratic side, but the Republicans have some bragging right. rights there as well. And some of these women, I should say, are also right. immigrants as right. well. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the Georgia governor race. Boy, that's a nail biter. What do you make of the fact that in a normally, traditionally red state of Georgia, Stacey Abrams and Brian Kemp are going head right. to head? Well, this is the new coalition that Democrats have dreamed about, actually, for more than a generation, of bringing in uh, women, uh, minorities, people who have not been part of the electoral process, a lot of first-time voters. And red state of Georgia, the Republican normally would win easily. And the Hands fact down. that it, right, the fact that it is so close does tell us that this, this new majority is out there wait, waiting to be born. Were there any mistakes, Eleanor, that the Democrats made in this process that maybe would have helped them win more seats in the Senate? Um, the one mistake which the Republicans are claiming the Democrats made is going too far in protesting uh, Ju Judge Kavanaugh. And the one uh, Democratic senator who voted for Kavanaugh uh, Joe Manchin of West Virginia was the only one, really, who held his seat in, in those endangered red states. And so I think the president, again, he kept driving home the message that the charges against uh, Judge Kavanaugh were, were made up and they were fake, and that uh, women should be fearful that their sons and their husbands and their fathers might be wrongly charged. Now, I don't agree with that message, but I think he, uh, the president had some success in driving that message home. And finally, what did this 
election really accomplish in terms of changing the mood, the shift, the rhetoric, the division? Are we going to see a change from the Democrats? And is there going to be a change from this administration, from this White mm -hmm. House? Well, the president has said he could tone it down and maybe he could be a little softer. And he said that in the final day before the election when it became apparent that it was the Republicans were going to lose the House. So we'll know in his press conference today if he's going to tone it down. But uh, if the opportunity arises, he will turn it up. And I think the message that he took away from this is that uh, driving home, the scare message on immigration will bring out his base. It's how he won the presidency in 2016. And I think in his mind, that's how he held the Senate. All right. We'll have to leave it there. Eleanor Cliff, thank you so okay, much. Okay. Thank you. Uh,